In the previous video, we demonstrated some of the most common ways to combine SDFs. In this video, we'll cover a few more combiner operators. We'll be starting where the previous video left off, so I recommend watching that one first, though it isn't strictly necessary to understand what we'll be covering here. As you work with larger scenes, you may notice that Touch Designer will sometimes stall when you are rewiring parts of the network. This happens because a generated shader is changing, which causes the GPU driver to recompile it. The more complex a scene gets, the longer that will take. So it's recommended that you avoid doing any rewiring in a live context like in a VJ set. Delete the SDFs in the combiner that we created in the previous video. Create a new sphere SDF. and connect it to the renderer. Then create a head SDF. The head SDF is a very complex operator that models a human head. The code was created by TD Hooper on Shader Toy. So connect the head to the first input on the renderer, and you'll notice that there's a stall there. Now the same thing will happen when you change it back to the original input, depending on how complex it is. So create a switch dat and connect both of these SDFs to it. Then connect that switch to the renderer. Now when you change the index parameter here, you'll notice that you still get that stall. So the switch dat works because ROPs use dat tables to communicate with each other. But what ha if you want to swap them live without stalling touch center? So delete the switch dat and create a switch ROP from the palette. So connect both of these SDFs to the first two inputs and then connect it to the renderer. So we still get that stall when we're wiring it there, but now when we change the source, there's no stall. So the switch ROP allows you to easily swap between operators without requiring the shader to recompile. It does this by including all the code needed for all of its inputs and choosing from them using a parameter within the shader. But the switch operator doesn't support any kind of blending between its inputs, it just swaps them. Create a blend operator and connect it to the same two SDFs. And then we're going to create a box SDF and connect that as well on the third input on the blend. And then connect the blend to the renderer. And we can delete that switch. So now on the blend, which has similar parameters to switch, if you change this blend parameter, you get a smooth transition between the shapes. Now this is one of the big advantages of working with SDFs compared to SOPs. In order to blend with SOPs, you need to make sure that they have the same number of points and the corresponding points are in similar positions and so on. But with SDFs, you can just blend between any two SDFs regardless of their complexity. There are also some combiners that produce more unusual interactions between SDFs. So create an edge combine and connect it to connect the box to the first input and then the sphere to the second input and then connect that to the renderer. And we can delete this blend and the head. On the box, set the uniform scale to 1.5, and then on the sphere, we're gonna set the position to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then set the radius to 0 0.7. So on the edge combine, note that we're currently using the engrave mode. So if you change the radius here, you'll note how it is kind of etching a, a groove into the shape uh, into the first shape where the second shape intersects it. And it does that with this kind of hard angled uh, cut. 
and the radius controls the size of that, uh, both the width and the depth. I'll change the mode to groove, and you'll notice that it's similar, but it has kind of a flat bottomed groove, and it also has a separate depth setting. Change the mode to tongue, which is similar to groove, but instead of cutting uh, an indentation in, it raises an area. So it has the same kind of radius and depth parameters there. Then change the mode to pipe. So pipe gets rid of both of the input shapes and only produces this kind of intersection region between them. And you can change the radius of the intersection there. So that's it for this section. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Check out my Patreon to get more tutorials, scene file downloads, and more.